What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today I have a very nice US Optics TS20X. It is a two and a half to 20 first focal plane scope. And let's get right into it. At the back, you have your fast focus eyepiece, diopter, whatever fancy words you want to call it. What matters is it has a huge range of motion. It's going to focus um, the reticle for pretty much anyone's eyesight. The range is huge. Now, the other thing I want to point out, it's very smooth and tight. And that's going to be the theme for this entire video. This optic is smooth and tight. Everything is as tight and as smooth as it should be as you go through the whole uh, optic. Um, eye relief, eye box, and glass clarity. Now, I couldn't find, really find a definitive answer on what the eye relief is as far as inches. I looked at the manual, looked at the website, read it, somewhere I read two to three inches, and that doesn't compute because eye relief seems much better than that to me. I probably should have called and asked US Optics. I'm sorry that I didn't do that. But the one thing I read said two to three inches, and I find that very, very hard to believe that's only two to three inches. I think the eye relief is much better than that. Even when you kick it up all the way to 20 times magnification, yes, you have to get sucked in when you increase to that a high magnification, but um, I still think it's much better than two inches. So I find that hard to believe. So I don't have a definite answer for you as far as inches. I will say, I think the eye relief the eye box and the glass clarity is all very good for an optic with this magnification range and this price. I don't think you'll be disappointed, especially the glass clarity. Out of the three, the glass clarity is very nice, but I don't think you'll be disappointed on any three of those if you pick up one of these scopes and look through it. Before we get into the magnification range and the reticle and all that cool guy stuff, let me thank the biggest supporter of this channel. It's Natchez Shooting and Outdoors. They have you covered for all your fishing gear, hunting gear, uh, ammo, reloading, firearm accessories, all that good stuff. They even have this exact scope at a very, very good price. The link is you know where. Check out Natchez Shooting and Outdoors for me, please. I appreciate it. Now let's talk about the magnification ring. It goes obviously from two and a half all the way to 20 and the throw is probably more than 180 degrees. It has a really uh, long throw because it's a huge magnification range. And again, it's very, very smooth and tight and it's not too stiff. Obviously it's more stiff than the diopter, which I want because once I set the diopter, I usually don't adjust it. But the magnification ring is always moving so I don't want that to be too stiff and I think the smoothness and the stiffness of it is good. I'm very, very happy with it. One uh, caution, because it's such a wide range of magnification, it has, I think, more than 180 degree throw. If you choose to use a speed lever on this um, and you have it on a bolt gun like I do here, the uh, the bolt handle itself is probably going to get in the way. So if you're on a semi-auto, you should be good. But if you have it on a bolt gun, that's probably going to cause some problems. Now, the reticle. It's available in four different types of reticles. Two of them are MOA. Two of them a mill. This one I have here is mill because I prefer a mill reticle. It is a first focal plane reticle. It means a couple different things. As you adjust the magnification, you will see uh, as you increase the magnification, the reticle will get larger. But the holdovers on the reticle will work on any magnification. Where a second focal plane are usually less expensive, but typically the holdovers and the in the uh, bullet drop compensator and whatever else is on there are only going to work on max magnification. So I get to cheat a little bit. The um, reticle I have is called the MGR. Some of the other reticles do have some Christmas tree holders. If you want more holdovers for windage at further distances, you can get that, but that's not the one I went with. So both left and right windage has uh, five and a half mils of holdover. The uh, holdovers for your elevation is going to be 11 mils and then the hold unders are five and a half mils as well. They have a couple stadia lines in between those mil adjustments. They have one for half of a mil, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, very, very useful reticle. The dot in the center is very crisp and small and easy for small-ish precision shots. Like, I know it's two and a half times magnification. You're not gonna typically use this too close up, but it's capable of that if you want to. All right, windage and elevation. There's a lot going on with the windage and elevation knobs. The first thing I wanna say is again, that they're smooth and they're very, very tight. There is no wiggle to them. Like, I always wonder if windage and elevation knobs have some slop, some wiggle, if that's gonna affect your accuracy. Never been able to prove it, but these uh, do not have any wiggle. If you have a mill reticle, it's, uh, each click is 0.1 mils uh, or quarter MOA if you have 
the MOA reticle. And I gotta look down and cheat again. I'm, I'm sorry that I have to do that. They are very, very audible. Like if you listen, they are super, super audible. I'll be quiet for a second. And they are also very tactile as well. They have a total of 32 uh, mil total adjustments. That's a lot of adjustments. I don't think you're gonna bottom that out one way or the other. They're, that is just a ton, a ton of adjustments. So you can reset them, of course. You just undo the screw uh, one full turn and that loosens up this turret. So once you get your gun sighted in, you undo that screw and you can bring it back to zero so you know exactly where your sight in is. Now the windage up here also is a zero stop turret. If you want it to be, you don't have to do this. It comes with a little screw and an Allen wrench. You completely take the uh, top turret off. You screw in that little screw and that's gonna stop your um, your elevation turret, um, whether you're spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, both ways, once you spin all the way around, it's going to stop it at that point. So again, you don't have to do it, it's completely optional, but it is nice that they offer that feature. Now on the other side of the optic is gonna be your parallax adjustment and your battery controls. It takes a CR2032. Um, I read somewhere that it's up to 500 hours, but it wasn't again on the US Optics website or the manual, so don't quote me on that. But 2032 is great, very, very common battery. It has 11 brightness settings, and I'm happy to say there's off positions in between each one, which is great. I appreciate that. Next to it is the parallax adjustment. It's very, very easy to adjust the parallax to make sure that reticle is cleared at any distance, at any magnification. They have some indicators on here that go from 10 yards all the way up to infinity. And uh, there's two knobs on that dial and that's what makes it so easy to spin. So those, um, those, those yard indicators will give you a rough estimate on where the knob needs to be at different distances. But adjust the parallax until it's clear for your eyesight and then you're good to go. And like everything else, it's smooth, it's tight, it feels good, it works well. I went, on this side, I'm gonna put up the field of view at different distances. Here, we're gonna look at the dimensions, the weight, the price, and I wanna talk, it's a 34 millimeter tube, so getting mounts or scope rings or whatever should be very, very easy. Lots of good choices, 50 millimeter objective lens, and uh, it comes with an extremely nice box, extremely nice scope caps, a very nice manual, and this here is a QC report. Every US optics, whether it's one that they make in-house here in the US, or some of their optics are made overseas, even the ones made overseas go through a very, very detailed QC check. And if they actually do this on every single optic, as thorough and detailed as this sheet shows, that is very, very impressive. QC is very time consuming, very expensive, so I hope US Optics really does it that thorough on every single optic, because if they do, that is just awesome. Right, I want to talk about the price a little bit. On most websites, like Nasha's, I found it $1,400, $1,500 in that area, depending on which reticle you're getting. In a couple places, I found it for uh, $1,000, but I think that's an older model or something, like on Amazon it was a thousand, it was weird, I'm not sure. I think it was an older version, but typically expect to, that $1,400, $1,500 is where you need to be. All right, testing. So most of the time, or a lot of the time, it's lived on this Bagara 22LR bolt gun. This is my son's little fun gun at the range. And way more magnification than you need for a 22 LR, but we like to have a lot of competitions. We put cans way out there, and uh, the extra magnification is good for my old eyes. Um, I also put it on a AR-10, and I'm pointing over there because that's where the AR-10 is. Um, Leviathan Defense AR-10, I put it on there just to get something with a little more recoil, a little more oomph, a little more beat up the optic a little than a 22 LR bolt gun. Probably about 100 rounds on the AR-10, several hundred rounds on this bolt gun. Once I put this bolt gun in my son's hand and give him a case of ammo, he just tears through it and likes to waste my money. I also shot several hundred rounds on this gun. Also, no problems, no issues, no concerns, nothing to write home about. I think I went through all of the um, eye box, eye relief, and uh, the magnification, and I shot a lot of drill. I always shoot a lot of drills, the same drill at different magnification. That's a great way to get used to an optic, especially one as powerful as this one here. All right, based on all that, my pros. The biggest pro is actually gonna be how much adjustment you have. 32 mil adjustment is a ton of adjustments. It's a good parallax adjustment, uh, uh, a parallax adjustment knob. It's smooth, it's easy to adjust, and something like that is 
really a necessity on a very high magnification optic like this. I like the offsetting in betweens on the brightness knob. If I didn't say it earlier, when you do turn the brightness on, the reticle is red and it's very bright. I would call it just about daylight bright and uh, the entire reticle lights up. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, there's a, a choice of four different very good reticles. I think the reticles are very useful and they have a wide ver uh, a variety of different styles to match your preference or your shooting type or whatever you're doing. And then again, I wanna mention it one more time. I think all of the controls are very smooth and very tight. The diopter, the magnification ring, the turrets, the zero stop, all that stuff. Well thought out, tight, I like it. Thumbs up. The only thing I wish um, that was added to this scope behind both the uh, turrets, I would like to see uh, which way you're spinning is up or down, left or right, so you know. That would be the only thing. If I could change one thing or anything about the scope, that would be the one and only thing I would change. Overall, it is a perfect scope for someone who likes to hunt, PRS, DMR, um, what was the other one I had? Competition shooters, great for those long distance competition shooters. It's very, very capable of easily reaching out past a thousand yards, assuming you have the skills and the gun and the ammo to do it. This is more than capable of doing that. Let me remind you of those links. They're down. You know where if you want to pick one of these up. Hopefully I can find you a good deal. Natchez Shooting and Outdoors, biggest supporter of this channel. They do have this plus many, many, many other optics if you are in the market. My shirt, link down there as well. Disobey if you want to show your disobeyance. Is that a word? It is now. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. If you think I deserve it, please do me those favors. Like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe's a big one. I need those subscriptions. Trying to get to 50,000 subscriptions soon. And if you think I deserve it, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.